Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here, and today's video is in two halves, the first of which is a celebration <laughs> of the big two oh 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 is that right? <laughs> 20,000 anyway, subscribers, the latest milestone that the channel has hit, something I didn't necessarily think we would ever reach, uh, and the second part of the video is a big channel announcement. Ooh. When I started out with this channel a little over two years ago, I really didn't know what to expect. I mean, I definitely thought that I had something interesting to offer, something that was perhaps a little bit different from what was already out there, uh, but I still had the fear that, well, would anyone watch? Or more importantly, would they subscribe? Uh, I stayed ambitious though, and after commandeering what is the biggest room in the Hood household, <laughs> go big or go home after all, uh, I set about developing what has become Brick Nottingham. Uh, my plan then has pretty much not changed in all of this time, uh, and that was to create uh, a Lego city that was incredibly detailed uh, and show all of the steps along the way. Everything from Lego purchases, and sort of techniques all the way through to significant builds like say this, the beach, or maybe the motorized fairground, which is still well under development. Uh, but to stay away from doing the more sort of mundane Lego news and reviews. From humble beginnings, I started with three targets for my channel's size, 10,000, which pretty much puts you on the Lego channel map, uh, 20,000, whoop whoop, which means you're here to stay, uh, and the really big one, 100,000 subscribers, when even YouTube recognises your success by sending you a massive shiny play button. One day maybe, fingers crossed. So it's quite staggering to me that we've hit that second target before we've even filled the Lego room the first time around, and just to put that progress in context, that represents 500,000 hours of watch time. Hold on, 500,000 hours of watch time. That's half a million hours, or 57 years non-stop. Wow, I think that just blows your mind. Uh, so I really couldn't have done it without all of you. So I want to give out a few very special thanks. Firstly, the biggest set of thanks to my Patreon supporters, who are the most generous people on the entire planet, in that they give very generously whilst also allowing me to maintain my kind of unwritten rule of having all content available to all people, regardless of the depth of their wallet. So as a result, they get absolutely no additional benefits whatsoever, so you can all see all of what I produce. So a massive thanks to them. Uh, secondly, I want to thank my YouTube members, why not join, it's only $1.99, uh, who I have loved seeing using all of my own brand of emojis in use, whether it's the badge of the super secret police, or just uh, the Doctor Inferno logo, or my sort of bedoying, or <laughs> good good brick hall o'clock, or whatever it is, uh, they've really uh, added to my enjoyment of reviewing <laughs> all the comments that you make. So thanks to them. Uh, thanks also to all the people who leave those comments. Uh, you make every build better, whether it's just something small, like changing the door handle on a build, or whether it's making me do kind of a massive overhaul of something like uh, the airport, where you really didn't like the inside, and by forcing me to have a rethink, it really was a lot better, so thanks to you. Uh, thanks also to anyone who's used my Legos Shop at Home or Amazon links. That really does help the channel as well. Thank you. Uh, but lastly, thanks to you. Yes, to you uh, for watching uh, my hands <laughs> a lot of the time uh, and listening to me waffle uh, seemingly endlessly, uh, especially when there's an important and exciting announcement to get to. Uh, but seriously, uh, really big thanks for making this journey possible. Thanks for getting my humour joining in with all my bedoings and my sirens and my silly techniques and all the growing lore of Brick Nottingham and the other place. <laughs> it's made making this channel just so much fun. Right, so gushing, self-congratulation and thanks over. Let's talk big announcement. 
Some people were trying to guess the announcement in advance, uh, and all of you were wide of the mark. Some of you thought I might be getting a very expensive and old modular to kind of add to the row here along the back or something like that, uh, and that's definitely not the case. Uh, some other people thought I might be joining the LEGO Ambassadors Network, which means I would pretty much lose my integrity and independence as I see it, so no thank you for that one. Uh, and other people thought that I might be going to a bigger room. Well, we're already in the biggest room in the house, but yeah, I think that is still the closest uh, because it is about expanding the amount of real estate that we've got uh, for LEGO development. Uh, but really, it specifically rates to my underwater area. Now, it had always been my intention to do my underwater area underneath my harbour. Uh, I mean, that makes the most sense, right? Uh, and I've kind of got a five deep and four base plate wide area that I can replicate on more tabletops on the floor. And you can see I'd already set that up right from the very beginning. So this is a very long held plan. It's just more of these tops uh, on the floor uh, with the legs actually on top of them and they're telescopic and that's why I can keep it all the same height. Uh, but there's a lot of problems with doing that. Uh, first of all, well, you've got all those table legs visible, which is very ugly. It's also going to be very hard to light because we've got the two sort of walls along this side with all those legs and so on. I mean, how on earth am I going to film it well and light it well? Uh, then thirdly, it's all going to be on exactly the same level because, well, it's a flat tabletop. And if I want to have loads of sort of submarines almost sort of uh, flying, so to speak, through the sort of depths of the waters all at different levels, it's going to have to have an absolute load of sort of strings and cables and whatnot in there. Uh, and I really think that's not going to look that great or even be that easy to do, especially with that lighting sort of situation as well. So I wasn't really happy with it. And that's one of the reasons why I haven't actually started my underwater area yet, because I thought it needed a major rethink. Because uh, one of the other major things that I really wanted to have with my underwater area was some real sort of interaction with things flying above the surface, boats actually on the surface, as well as everything that's going on underwater. Uh, and I can't really do that with all of this in place because, well, we've got piers, we've got rescue helicopters, warehouses, cranes and all the rest of it. Uh, and if I was to clear all of this out of the way to make sort of room for some exploration ships and things like that, well, it'd be a real loss to the city, wouldn't it? So I figured what I really needed was an absolutely new and dedicated area to my underwater scenes. Ah. So fresh with all the wonderful ideas for a multi-level dedicated undersea build area buzzing around in my mind, I thought I'd go to Mrs Hood and ask her very nicely for permission to expand into some more real estate in the house, and she very nicely said, not a chance. <laughs> so I had to think again, uh, and I thought again about this room, because it's really the only the other space I've got, uh, this being my office where I have my building desk, uh, but I don't have a huge amount of space here, not for a large horizontal layout anyway but with that multi-leveled idea I thought that might be possible to do a vertical setup so we're kind of going to move the camera and you're going to see areas that you've never seen before Ooh, how very exciting past my lava lamp past my very small but very wonderful uh, Star Wars Lego collection in that glass cabinet past a Radiohead poster to dun 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 no, not the submarine from 60264. <laughs> no, much bigger than that. We're looking at the thing that it sat in, this huge, vast cabinet made of glass. And you might be thinking at this point, hold on, you said this was supposed to be something unique to LEGO YouTube channels, something that nobody else had done. And lots of people have got their LEGO displayed in a glass cabinet. Well, no. That isn't what I'm saying, uh, and if you haven't immediately grasped what the plan is, then let me explain a lot further. So I think the plan is best shared with you by crudely annotating some pictures of the exact cabinet that we've got in the LEGO build room. Uh, and what I wanted to do with the underwater scene is show as much detail, as much of the plants and the varied 
uh, animal life and the goings on with the submarines and maybe some baddies and all sorts of stuff uh, on absolutely every level of the depths. So I thought it was brilliant idea to use a glass cabinet to represent kind of a massive cross-section, almost like a facade, of uh, an underwater scene. So this entire box, if you will, is one slice chopped down by a huge guillotine of uh, an underwater setting. Uh, and therefore we can have the top section representing the above water uh, area with some ships and aircraft and so on and that first glass shelf representing the surface of the water and then the entire rest of the cabinet as different levels of the depths underneath. So to annotate that I thought I'd uh, demonstrate by adding first of all a ship, <laughs> very crudely drawn, I think you'll agree, but that sort of shows what would be going on there. And maybe you could add a couple of smaller boats as well, and then maybe a helicopter flying overhead. Uh, and then everything underneath that would be, well, clearly underwater. So we could remove a shelf perhaps to make uh, the main area even more big. Uh, and we could fill that with all sorts of different submarines buzzing around, going about their business. Uh, and then why not add a huge sort of underwater base? That would look very good indeed. Uh, and then, of course, we'd have all of the <laughs> plant life that I've been diligently collecting on all those brick halls, all of the fish all swimming around, and it'd be much more full than this is currently showing. I mean, you know me, it would be absolutely packed and stacked with all of those different coloured and colourful pieces. Uh, and then I'd want to continue the depths much lower, uh, and it might be that we have a sort of chasm represented on the uh, glass shelf here that's halfway down to represent almost something where exploring submarines could go down, kind of probe ones, maybe unmanned ones, who knows, to explore the depths even further below. And, well, we could have some real beasties living in that sort of area that might come up and attack. Uh, and then we've got another layer even further down than that, and that would have all sorts of mysteries, I'm sure. Uh, so I don't want to do any spoilers now too much, but uh, essentially we can have some really crazy stuff going on the further we go down. And that's the level that I think that I would be highlighting with UV light, because as you saw before, this entire cabinet is lit from above with some spotlights, and then every shelf has a pair of lights attached to it as well. And I'm hoping I'll be able to get some UV equivalents to go in, or maybe I'll just have to buy some additional bulbs to do that. Uh, and that will mean that all of those wonderful pieces that fluoresce under UV light will be able to do so as part of this bottom layer, and maybe this uh, penultimate layer as well. But I hope <laughs> that uh, this sort of very crude drawing has given you much more of an insight as to what I want to do with my cabinet. Pretty exciting, I think. Right, so hopefully now you can understand my excitement and, well, share that excitement really. If you can imagine this very large cabinet absolutely chock-a-block full of all of those plant pieces, rock pieces and animal builds that we've been accumulating over the weeks and months past, then I think uh, you'll agree that this can only be absolutely fantastic when it is done. And hopefully that will make it worth the effort of getting this cabinet into the Lego build room, uh, just because when it was delivered by two incredibly strong men, uh, very ably, uh, I realised that it was a bit too tall for my door frame. Oh no, big disaster. Was I going to be having a glass cabinet right next to my front door? <laughs> that wouldn't have been very popular. Uh, so I had to actually take the entire top off the thing. Uh, unwire all the electrical gubbins that was on the top uh, and then slide it into the room and only then was it just about one tile depth as you can see here uh, shy of the top of the door frame <laughs> so yeah it only just made it in uh, and for those of you who are thinking well why don't you just angle it and tip it through the door you should see the uh, size of this thing and the weight of it and well it's made of glass so uh, yeah that wasn't uh, top of my list it is ridiculously heavy so anyway uh, the cabinet is safely in now uh, it is empty and lovely and clean I will be getting some sort of uh, backdrops to cover up that back wall and make that look more sort of aquatic and so on 
Uh, and then we can start the process of actually filling it, which will be absolutely amazing. I think you'll agree. So I do hope that you are as excited as I am by that announcement. I do hope that you <laughs> don't feel that sort of underwhelming in any way. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be great. <laughs> So 20,000 subscribers achieved, many thanks given out, and a big announcement made. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed all of that, even though it was just me talking. Uh, but we will return to normal service from Wednesday, where we'll be doing another Brick Hall, and that is number 97 now. So do get sending me your packages for Brick Hall 100, if you feel like doing so. Uh, the address is Robin Hood Bricks, P.O. Box 11048. Nottingham, NG8, 9QS, and remember to mark that UK, if you're not in the UK, uh, mark it as a gift, and with a value of under £30, including postage, and that will mean it will fly straight through to me. Uh, and on Friday, we'll be doing another build, probably in the fairground. I'm not going to leap straight onto the undersea <laughs> sort of uh, horse, so to speak, because uh, I think we do need to get that fairground finished before I can start with all of this. Otherwise, it never will get done. Um, but uh, until then, thank you very much for watching. It is appreciated. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. And if you value this channel, there are many ways in which you can support it do check out the links in the description below. Right, I think I need to Google some aquarium shops to find some awesome backdrops for my new cabinet. But until next time, see you! <laughs>